All right, it's early. I don't have myself together physically or mentally yet, but I'm inspired because apparently sometime late last night I got a box on my doorstep from Matthew Jensen. And if you haven't been watching his videos, go to his channel right now and watch his videos. Yeah, I'm probably going to say variations of that statement many times during this presentation. Because not only is he an icon in the sword review community, he's also one of the major players who inspired me to get my thing going. I guess, if I've been, at the time I'm filming this segment anyway, I'm coming up on a year of my, well, YouTube career for lack of a better term. And I guess my various ramblings and misadventures with sharp pointy objects are starting to get some attention. And for all of you who've been watching my videos, following, subscribe to my channel, getting those conversations going in the comments that continue to inspire me, I can't thank you enough. And I really can't thank Matthew enough, not only for thinking about me, but also for, for taking the time and the money to send me. Well, what did he send me? He recently did a video, what again, go watch it right now, a destruction test on the LK Chen Hidden Dragon Sparrow Dao. I think I got that right anyway, it's early. And we kind of had the same thought in the comments about what might be done with a sword like that in terms of a project. And he's seen me apparently, you know, reprofile and turn blades into other sorts of things or fix them up or whatever. So he thought of me in terms of someone to send, shall we say, the mortal remains of the sword to and a little extra something something in the package to go with it. So what's in the box? Okay, so first of all, he just sent me the bits in a pretty standard brocade sword box, just taped up. He's mentioned in other videos that he collects a lot of these, doesn't know what to do with them. So just in case you're curious, they make perfectly functional shipping containers for swords if you're not worried about how they look cosmetically when they get to where they're going. So, yeah, it worked. In the box. Well, first of all, when I picked it up, it was heavier than I expected, and we'll talk about the whys in a second, but let's let's look at what's left of the sword. I initially thought he forgot an important part because all I saw was the scabbard because the blade had fallen all the way down in it. Now, again, watch the video. Not only does he cover the sword, but what he did to it in detail. And if you look up this particular sword on LK Chen's website, you know it comes with a pretty short grip with a ring pommel that's pretty ornate, and he kept that piece for just a keepsake, and I'm, I don't intend, I wouldn't have intended to use it anyway, because I'm not fond of those. But it's designed with a short grip that fits down mostly inside the scabbard for one reason or another, and the reasons for that are kind of debatable. We'll talk about that later. Scabbard is pretty much intact and it's pretty solid. So uh, the fixtures are kind of plain. I may have plans for those, but that's what this is about. What can I do with what's left of the sword? So let's look at that. You'll see the metal collar, which still has remnants of the wood scales, which are totally gone, is still here. But it's basically a pretty straight Hirazukiri profile, if we're talking about Japanese swords, or Tangdao sort of thing. The original blade, well, it's made out of LK Chen's proprietary Damascus. And I, I haven't personally purchased an LK Chen sword, so this is my first experience with that steel. So this will be interesting might inspire me to make future purchases. The original blade, it's it's kind of narrow front to back, but pretty thick this way. It's a surprisingly solid piece of steel. Was originally apparently about 25, 26 inches long. What I've got left is 20 inches. So think about that for a second. That's perfectly within range of a short sword wakazashi. And one thing that's inspired me, one possibility for this blade if you go to the Lue Sword website, they have they have some short tongue style dao that also have that ring pommel on them. So that's one possibility. Another possibility was was a thought we kind of both had, Matthew and I, that it might make a good stick sword, sword cane zatoichi sort of thing. So yeah, that's something I'm into. So that might be where this is going. But the first thing I I need to find out is what I can do with this blade, and 
again, watch his review. He was pretty impressed with how much it held up to the abusive testing. There is a little bit of gouging in the edge, but it's pretty minor. Not a lot of major scratches or anything. It held up really well until, well, it didn't. And where it failed was he took it to what he calls his um, croquet stick of doom, which is a big solid metal rod that he bangs things against. Whacking the back of the blade, whacking the front of the blade held up really, the edge held up really well, but whacking the spine, he gave it about three good hits and then it, it snapped, it shattered. But again, I'm going to check it for any other kind of fractures, anything like that. I think the rest of the sword is very, very salvageable. And you already see I, I put some ink marks on it, considering where that new tip might go. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this out to the grinder sanders, even hand sanding, and see what I can do to recover the blade, and then we'll go from there. The other things he threw in the box, well, the original collars, fixtures from that hilt, and the reason why the box was heavier than anticipated is he tossed in this for giggles as he would say this apparently used to be a jkoo jku tsunami t10 clay tempered blade that he destroyed in an earlier video and had been then using to destroy other swords so he'd been whacking this further on other blades so yeah that's just really really chewed up I don't think it's cracked. Now, this is the thing. I've never tried, dared to reprofile, re-edge, reshape a clay-tempered blade before because that's asking for all kind of trouble. So this will be an interesting experiment because it's certainly going to need significant reshaping. Now, if this was a Nihonto in the old days that broke and let's say they wanted to try to turn it into a Tonto, well, the, the tip certainly turns into one. Hopefully there's enough length to do that. In order to, to preserve a clay-tempered edge in the laminations in that, what they'd actually have to do is take the spine forward to the tip here on the edge. Not, not well, what you've seen me draw is the shape of a fairly common tanto. And I've got basically 12 inches of blade left, which should be plenty to work with if there are no fractures. Now, this is a T10 blade that's been clay-tempered. And the interesting thing with all the abuse he's apparently put it to, it's gouged to hell. So yeah, I'm going to have to remove a lot of steel. And there are also some gouges in the spine and things like that. But this is, this is the telling part of this particular piece. There are no obvious cracks or those deep chips you get in super hard clay tempered edges. Like a 6062 Rockwell, when those things shatter, it kind of looks like ceramic shattered. You, know, you, get, the, you get the big circular divots or the cracks through. This hasn't done that. So I'm thinking when they clay tempered it, it wasn't necessarily that, that super clay tempering. Maybe they brought it up to a 55 Rockwell. I haven't really tested it yet. Also, the gouges in the spine are not that deep either, which tells me the spine probably isn't like a 40. So maybe it's an even enough temper throughout the T10 steel that, yeah, I can risk putting a, a new tip on it and it won't, be, it won't be terrible. But again, I need to take it out to... Well, my power equipment carefully keeping it cold the entire time I work with it so it doesn't overheat and get soft. That's the trick. I'll cover that in other videos. But yeah, first I want to see what I can do with these, and then that should inspire me to go further. Now we threw in the original Suka core. One of the things you can see, there's a, there's a heck of a tang on this thing, which considering how long the blade is, um, that's, unless this is turning into some kind of strange Naganata thing, yeah, I, I think that's going to get cut down. But first, let me see what I can do in terms of blade salvage. Oh my, what a day. At least it wasn't sweltering out, so I didn't just melt into a puddle. But, yeah, that was a big job. Well, part of it was a big job. The first part of it was surprisingly not a big job. 
I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. Result, Dragon Sparrow. I did manage to salvage the entire 20 inches of blade that I have, and I'm impressed with the steel. Started out with my grinder with a quench tank handy, keeping everything cool, and did the preliminary angle cuts and things, and then went to my big 4x36 sander, started on this one, only really needed to start with 400 grit up to 1,000, and then went to sand, wet sandpaper by hand to finish it off. And I probably spent maybe a whole hour and a half on the thing. Yeah, it didn't take too much. But yeah, I kind of copied the original tip angle with a little bit more curve. It's not, not a straight one. I may or may not change it later. But yeah, I was able to take all of those nicks out of the edge by giving it a new profile for just about, well, the first eight inches and then blended it into the rest. And I think it turned out really, really well. It's not super sharp. It's about as sharp as, well, the untouched parts of the edge. So we'll see how that goes. But speaking of how it goes, now it's time to start making some decisions. And let me know what you think in the comments. What should I do with this? Should this be a short sword? Should it be a stick cane sword? Or maybe something I haven't thought of yet. But the big job of the day. This is about five hours worth of work. Yeah, probably the biggest thing I've done in a long time. But remember that jagged, unrecoverable piece of clay-tempered T10? We'll call this preliminary result. And yeah, I'm kind of pleased with how it's turned out so far. I went ahead and went with, well, traditional Shinogi Zukiri. And dabbing it with lemon juice when I was done, before I... I well, I didn't finish polished it, but I polished it for the day and oiled it so it wouldn't corrode. Yeah, the, the hamon is still there. It is still visible. I could certainly bring it out more. But again, it's, this was a massive amount of work. I started on the grinder. I had to put a new tip on it, and then I had to just grind off a whole lot of that edge. I took that thing down to the point where it had two to three millimeters of blunt. It would have made a great Eito. Ei Tanto, Ei Wakazashi, whatever you want to call it, which means when I went to the sander, I started with 120 grit and worked up to 1,000, but I had to create all new edge plane, tip plane. All of that had to be completely redone. Again, being really, really careful to keep the thing cool the whole time. Yeah, so that was that was a long job. I did a little bit on the ridge planes because there were some nicks there, and then yes, I did have to also resurface the mune because there are a couple of big gouges in there and those came out reasonably well. But it is, it's a, like I said, the clay tempering is still there and it is a tough, tough, solid, heavy, dense piece of metal. And yeah, it's, it's got an edge on it now. Again, it's not finished, but as you saw in the paper cut demonstration, it's definitely, it's definitely got a lot of potential. So what am I doing with this one? You'll notice I haven't cut down the tang yet because I haven't made the decision. Do I want to try to make a short wakizashi or an otanto out of it? Do I want to go with traditional mountings? Do I want to go all the way with Ito and Samegawa or something else? Do I want to go with something more modern, alternative, tactical? Or again, something I haven't even considered yet. Let me know what you think. So we'll get that conversation going in the comments. Definitely, definitely to be continued. And Matthew, thank you so much again, Sword Brother. I will keep you all updated.